Louis Egg Breakfast and Lunch Restaurant is proud to sponsor this episode of Patriot Plates. Visit us at any one of our Six Valley locations, family owned and operated since 1986. Let every nation know whether it wishes us well or ill that we shall pay any price bear any burden, meet any hardship, support any friend, oppose any foe to assure the survival and the success of liberty. Being in the military is being a part of history. And with approximately 18 million veterans in the United States, each one has a story. I'm Major Scott Husing, United States Marine Corps, retired. I had 10 deployments and led hundreds of combat missions. My company and I fought in some of the deadliest battles in Iraq. And I was fortunate enough to share those stories and honor the men and women who fought in my book, Echo and Ramadi. But most veterans don't get that chance. Welcome to Patriot Plates. Our producers have spent countless hours on the road searching for veteran license plates and the stories behind them. These veterans have first-hand accounts of what happened in our nation's missions, battles, and wars. Patriot Plates believes that all veterans should be able to tell their story. My name's Jack Talkington. I served in the Army. I was with 1450 Aviation Battalion from uh, 69 to 71. After graduating from high school in uh, 68, I had about a year afterwards and I got a draft notice. And I was a healthy 18 year old kid and I knew that I was probably gonna be going into the military. So when I signed up for the Army, I decided to do the extra six months and pick my MOS out. And I uh, picked uh, mechanics, uh, 67A10, which was uh, helicopter mechanics. When I uh, arrived in the base of the 145th Aviation Battalion, the first night we got in a rocket attack and I started running for the bunker and one of them hit outside near the bunker and I turned around very slowly and put the mattress over my head in my bedroom and laid there until it was over. After that rocket attack, I. I got up uh, the next morning and I went out to the hangar. This officer told me uh, that your helicopter were flying out tomorrow. And I go, well, no, sir, I'm a, I'm a mechanic. And he says, yeah, you are. You're the crew chief on this helicopter. This is gonna be your helicopter. I flew with uh, Patrick Fitzsimmons probably a lot more than other pilots. We used to guard uh, swift boats uh, on the Mekong Delta. And then he talked me into hunter killer teams. So a hunter killer team is a Kiowa flying low, looking at stuff, and then Cobras flying with them, and then the Cobras would do any damage if you ran into anybody. On this uh, one day in August in 69, uh, Patrick and I got a mission to go to an air base planes were getting shot at as they were taken off this airbase. So there was four of us on board, Patrick Fitzsimmons, pilot, I was flying co-pilot, and we had a, a, a door gunner, Paul Montos, that was uh, six months in the country, and another gentleman that flew along with us, Ron Paquette, that uh, just came along for a ride. We took off in the Kiowa to go check it out. So as we were covering around looking, and Pat was flying, and I noticed some black pajamas hanging on a tree and a fire going. So I told Pat, I says, okay, 
looks like there's somebody over there. We, we need to check it out. I said, fly by. I'll throw a smoke grenade on it, and then we'll talk to the Cobras. So Pat circled back around and went to come in and go by for me to throw a smoke grenade on there. And, and uh, he made the mistake of stopping just for a second. He should have just flew by, but we stopped just for a second. And right when we stopped, this small arms fire took us out. Uh, they hit Pat, and we came crashing down through the jungle. And uh, here we are in the middle of the jungle. I looked over to Pat, and Pat was critically injured. And, and in the back seat was uh, Paul Montos. He couldn't move. He hurt his back. Ron Paquette, he was sitting in the same seat as, the, the, as Paul Montos, but he wasn't injured. He wasn't injured, and thank God, he was a great help. You know, I don't know. I would have been all by myself if it wasn't for him. Uh, I was trying to get Pat out of the, the uh, helicopter and get everything squared away. And at this point, I'm in charge because Pat's gone. I dragged Pat out. We're trying to stop him from bleeding. We're dragging uh, Paul Montos out of the helicopter, putting him over here because he can't move. We put the M60 back together because it had broke apart after the landing. And I started shooting it and throwing hand grenades around the area. And of course the Cobras did not know we were shot down. They just thought we had an engine failure. So they sent the medevac in and we were still shooting and throwing hand grenades. We we're getting Pat together and trying to get him and uh, Paul Montos on board this medevac. Well, the medevac came in, they shot it down and it didn't land on top of us, but had enough oomph to get away and crash a little ways away. So then the Cobras knew we were, had got, been shot down. So they called in a second medevac, and we got uh, Paul and uh, Patrick Fitzsimmons on board on that helicopter. And they got up into the helicopter with the jungle penetrator, which is a cable device that lifts you up through the jungle because they couldn't land, there was no place to land. And uh, they took off, and by golly, they, got, they shot them down too, and they had to crash land a little ways away. And then they sent a third medevac in to pick them up and carry them away. And then they sent the fourth medevac in to pick us up. Aron Paquette gets on board the jungle penetrator and goes up the winch, goes up there, and they send the winch down to me, and. And I have the M60 machine gun, and I'm still shooting it because I don't know who's out there or what's out there. So I grab onto the jungle penetrator, I'm holding an M60 machine gun, and I'm shooting it on the way up to the helicopter. And I have my hand above the little notch on the jungle penetrator, which stops the winch. And my hand goes in the winch, and it hurts so bad that I drop the M60 machine gun, and I watched it go straight down and stick into the ground, almost like a sword. And I thought, oh my gosh, thank God. We're not spending the night out here. As I got in the helicopter, the, the, the medic in the helicopter goes, you got blood on you. you, you're injured. And I go, no, that's probably from my pilot. My pilot got shot and I was trying to give him some aid and I think that's from him. He goes, no, 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 you're shot in the leg. I didn't even realize. I mean, the adrenaline was so high that you don't feel that stuff, you know? And uh, we flew to the field hospital. I went in and, and got treatment there. And, uh, and it, was, it was pretty nasty. It was two, two bullet holes, one through, one through and one out. I was really lucky that it didn't hit anything major. I recovered. I wasn't injured enough to, to stop my second tour. And I went right back to flying after that. And I did uh, another... Uh, uh, seven months of flying. After I got out of the military, I went and visited uh, Fitzsimmons' family. I was 20 years old, and I was telling them about their son, how he got killed. And uh, very hard thing to do. You know, you just keep thinking about it, and you have this survival guilt. Why wasn't it me? Why was it, Pat? I'm sitting two feet from him. Just luck of the draw. Uh, 
And you know, I looked forever for those other two guys. For, I looked for Paul Montos for 30 years. I wanted to find those guys and talk to them. Just to try to settle what happened. And uh, I finally found them both. I thank God I came back, but I also pray to God to uh, all the people that did just so many atrocious injuries that in a normal battlefield, the people would have not survived. But thanks to the helicopter, you pick people up right away and they get medical treatment right away. Yeah, this bracelet on my hand here is a tail rotor chain off a Huey helicopter. And the tradition is, after you get shot down, you take that chain out of the destroyed helicopter and you divide that up four ways and every member of the crew gets a chunk of that. And I've been wearing this thing for 40 years, 50 years now, and it has a black band on it for Patrick Fitzsimmons that is gone and no longer here. But I remember him every day on my wrist. To tell you the truth, I think patriotism is putting your, yourself forward to protect freedom in this country. This country is not perfect, and I understand that, but it's the best one I've been in, and I wouldn't trade it for another one. So that's patriotism. I'll tell you what, when you go to that Vietnam Wall, or you go to the Korean, and you go to that memorial, and you walk through there, you feel your heart and you know what's happened that is patriotism right there it won't go away it never will that's what I say it is Don't miss our next veteran story on Patriot Plates. Get notified by liking and subscribing below. We want to thank our special sponsors, the Papago National Guard Base and the Arizona Military Museum under the direction of Colonel Joe Abodili, who made this episode possible. I'm retired Major Scott Husing, hoping that the next time you see a veteran plate, you'll think about the story and the sacrifice that went behind it. Thanks for watching Patriot Plates. One veteran, one story. Save the Brave connects veterans through outreach programs to build strength of character. Our essential task is to prevent veteran suicide. Save the Brave is committed to providing veterans with post-traumatic stress ways to connect in a safe space. To donate your time, money, or resources, visit savethebrave.org. Reach out to a veteran in need and direct them to Save the Brave.